Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and this is the final video on uh, creating a CS4 exploding house of cards in 3D. And so if you're just tuning in on YouTube, you want to go to my blog, which is uh, professionalpapervision.wordpress.com, where this article is posted. And we're going to go ahead and bring up the demo so you can take a look at it. So here's the House of Cards, and in the previous two videos, we actually showed you how to go in and build this using the new f Flash CS4 uh, 3D tools. And now if you click on one of those, they explode. Boom, there you go. Click on another one. Boom. And like I said, when you build the card, each of these cards is composed of movies, clips underneath it. So it's one big movie clip, and then all the cards are single movie clips underneath it. And when the program brings it in, you click on it, it actually iterates over each one of those cards and assigns them a random velocity and acceleration and uh, position and spin. So you click on that, boom. And there they go. And even the letters themselves are uh, explosive. Click on the letters, there they go. Cool. So let's now take a look at the code and see how we made that. So let's go ahead and pan down here to the code and start talking about how it was created. Now, in the book, we actually develop a particle 3D class. So let me talk about the difference between that and paper vision. In paper vision, in a way, 3D and some of the other uh, programs out there like Sandy, uh, pretty much it was perspective scaling. Now, I believe that a way 3D has now incorporated uh, CS4 into it, so that may not be true about it anymore. But there's perspective scaling, and you, in a sense, you create your Z. But in CS4, the Z component is already there. It's all being done uh, underneath the scenes with the Flash player. So you should take full advantage of that. So in the previous uh, part of the book, we actually develop a particle 3D class. And we need to modify that class so we can blow things up. So the class now takes full advantage of Z. So you don't have to worry about all these scaling stuff. You throw that out, you have Z. The only thing you have to do with this class is sort, because CS4 doesn't sort. So we create a sorting function to do that with. And that's all explained in the book. Now, once you've done that, you've got to add spin, because that's what makes a particle blow up. So you click on it, you give it a random velocity, and boom, it's got to spin out into space. And so you, get, you would just pretty much in a particle class, whenever you need a do, new property, you just add it. And so we go to the particle class, and we add public variables spin x, spin y, and spin z. And you come along here, and you declare those as 0, 0, 0, because we're going to set those in the main wrapper program, not here in the particle class. And then what you have here is an iteration that iterates over the spin and makes it spin. So that's in your update function which once again is called by the wrapper class. Now that's only halfway because that will only allow one particle spin. You've got to use a big word called polymorphism. And we've talked about that in a previous post. It's pretty much the king's kid. If the king is allowed in the throne room, so the king's kid, who in a sense inherits from the king, is allowed as well. And it's all about data typing. So you pretty much you've got this data type object that you pull right into your particle class. So you want to basically, in this, as opposed to just uh, letting the particle class sit there, you want to bring things into its constructor. And so you create a little OBJ object, display object, to bring it to the constructor. You get rid of extend sprite, because that object could be anything. And then you bring it in, and you start applying all these things to it. So the big deal is you had this this keyword in the previous program. Get rid of it and put your object there. So every object that's transferred in will get its own velocity, its own rotation, its own spin. And that's the whole secret behind the uh, program. Here's the actual particle code right here. Here's all those variables, and like I said, the velocity, gravity, friction, fade, auto spin, spin x, y, and z, and display object that we created. And there's my uh, constructor, and I'm bringing in that object, which is that card. So when we iterate over all those pieces inside the Flash movie, those individual cards are being brought into that OBJ object right there. And once they are, they come in here with initial velocity, but they're set in the wrapper program. We'll show that to you in a moment. And here's your update function. And this actually is keyed into your on inner frame in your wrapper program, which in a sense uh, changes the friction of your velocity, it updates your velocity, sets gravity. So the cards eventually fall down because they could be zooming up into space, but gravity pulls them back down. And then your object spin, which sends them spinning off in different directions. So that's pretty much the particle class. Let's just take a look at the wrapper. Most important thing about the wrapper is that each card set. Each movie has to be given an instance name. I call it card set one, card set two, card set three here, and then text it explodes as well. And when you key on it with a mouse event listener, it just runs the explode program. Let's take a look at that explode program real quick. So here's the explode program. So when you click that, here's your random X, random Y, random Z velocity, your gravity, your friction, and your spins, and those are all transferred into that right, that particle 3D explode class. And you can see here I put a little more spin on the x direction, which made the car look a little bit more physical. I don't know why, but it did kind of intuitive programming there. 
And pretty much that's all there was to it. And here's my event listeners. And so that's how you build that. Let's go back and take a look at that now and watch that program one more time. So let's click on this. And we're just going to click on these houses, click on one, boom, the other, kabam, the other, kaboom, and the words, kaboom, there you have it. And it's just so simple. I mean, just so few amount of lines of code to create something so cool. And that just shows you the power of Flash CS4. Now, this is Mike Live from Northern Kentucky University. Thanks a lot for watching.